Bonjour, Kinemagin in Ireland and Dijnikas. Welcome to the friendly confines of fifth grade. The moment you are waiting for is here, our newest episode of My Math. Today we step slightly away from what we've been working on and we're going to look at problem solving. These problem solving sessions are designed to help develop strategies to approach story problems and other multi-step problems that your child will need to be successful on standardized tests, word problems, and other higher level math questions. Our essential question for chapter one remains, how does the position of a digit in a number relate to its value? So we have a problem of the day to begin with. Maddie is twice as old as Julio. Maddie is half as old as Gabriella. Julio is eight years old. How old are Gabriella and Maddie? So let me grab my annotation tool here. I'm gonna to wanna to write my information down. We know that Julio is eight. We know that Maddie is twice as old as Julio. And if you see the term twice, that means multiply by two. So eight times two is 16. Now Maddie is half as old as Gabriella. So Gabriella is 32. These kind of questions are designed to get your brain thinking and force you to kind of use reasoning. All right, let's move forward. There are all my drawings. So let's begin on page 61 in your My Math Volume 1 Student Edition. Uh, the packet will be labeled with a green page if you have the original. If you don't, it says Lesson 9, Problem Solving Investigation, Strategy Using the Four. Step plan. So learn the strategy. Let's start with our sample problem here. Victor spent $61 on some sandpaper for his model cars. He bought two packages of the smallest grain sandpaper and spent the rest on the largest grain sandpaper. How many packages of the largest grain sandpaper did he buy? So I always would like to take note of any graphs that are next to me. And I can see that there's the size of grain, which is gonna help me know which one's the smallest and which one's the largest. And I kind of look at it and say, okay, all zeros, all zeros. So this is gonna be the largest, the 11,000th centimeter. And this will be the biggest because three is greater than one. For our two most expensive, you're only gonna need one of those. $13. So let's see here. How much, well, first off, we need to understand the question. Before you start just throwing numbers around, it's a good idea to know what you're dealing with right here. So let's start out with the facts. How much money was spent? $61 was spent. And how many packages, in fact, I'm gonna clear this and make this a little easier for you to see at home. We know that $61 was spent. And how many packages of the smallest grain sandpaper were bought? Well, two. What do I need to find? The number of packages of the largest grain. So once I know what the problem's asking me, then I can start figuring out the next steps in the problem. So I'll clear this drawing and move on to the next. You see the answer here. So our step two, so step one was understand, step two is plan, and you can work backwards on these problems. So the first thing I need to know is how much is there? We started out 61 minus the smallest grain here was 
one thousandths of a centimeter, and that was twenty dollars per package. We purchased two times twenty dollars, and then we're going to figure out the answer of x here. So that's our going to be my plan. I'm going to solve it this way. I'll go ahead and clear the drawings. Now move on to the next slide. S solve. And we mentioned that the smallest size was going to be the text one here is blank of a centimeter and that's 0 0.001. So the smallest size is 0 0.001 of a centimeter, and that costs 20 bucks. So two times 20, and if you're thinking at home, well, two times 20, two times two is a four, and then add the zero there, $40. So 61 minus that 40, do your subtraction, find the difference. That's the term we use for the answer to a subtraction problem is $21. So now we need to figure out how many packages did he buy? 21 divided by seven is three. So now we know that he purchased three packages of the largest green sandpaper. Step four, coming up next, is to check your work. Does your answer make sense? Well, sure, three times seven is 21, plus 40 is 61, that's what I started with. It's important to include your check on your status and build a build from there. Um, if it's way off in your answer, then you might wanna relook at the problem. All right, let's go to the next one. We're gonna practice the strategy. Louisa bought a roll of ribbon. She used 34 inches of each on each of two gifts. Then she used 13 inches on a scrapbook page and there are 39 inches left. How many inches did she start with? Well, I'm gonna grab my annotation tool, slowly. We know that she used 34. We know she used 13. We know there are 39 left. That's all of the important numbers out of here. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's a scrapbook page or it's a gift or what she used it. Now we know the facts of how much is there. If you need to write this down, remember to please pause the video, write it, and then come right back. Clear the drawings, let's go to our next step. If you remember that understand was the first step, the next one is plan. And I am going to, my plan is gonna be similar to the one that was in the last one, and I'm going to work backward. Because the opposite of subtraction is addition, and we've been subtracting off differing lengths to get down to the 39. Well, let's add those other lengths right back to it and find out what the whole piece was. So let's solve. Go back and get my annotation tool and text box here. We had 39 inches at the end. The inverse operation to subtraction is addition. There's 13 that she spent on the scrapbook page and then 34 on the two gifts. We do the math, 39 plus 13 is 52, plus four is 56, plus 30 is 86. And I should use my label of inches because I wanna know if it's 86 inches or 86 miles, because that makes a little bit of a difference on the size of the roll you carried home. So 86 inches is our final answer. And let's go on our next steps. Do you remember what it was? We've had to understand, plan, solve, and 
If you said the next strategy, part of the strategy was check, you are correct. Is my answer reasonable? Is it reasonable that if we used about 50 inches and there's about 40 left, that we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 90? Sure. And this is where your rounding skills will be very useful because you can kind of do a quick in your head, does this answer make sense? And realistically, this is something you will do even if you go to the grocery store and you buy like three things. Is it, does that price make sense? If it doesn't, you want to look at your receipt. But it's the same kind of strategy. All right, I'm going to have you practice a couple. Let's look at number one, basic. With these, I will read it to you. Then I want you to pause the video, solve it, and come back and check your answer. The table shows the number of ounces of butter Marty used in different recipes. She has six ounces of butter left. How many ounces of butter did she have at the beginning? Is your answer reasonable? Explain. Go ahead, pause the video, and then remember to use your steps. I'll see you on the other side. You may pause it now. Welcome back. Let's look at our strategy. And you can tell that we, again, worked backwards so that we had the four plus eight plus six, plus you had six left over, equals 24, so 24 ounces. If you didn't find that answer, write this down, and then I do encourage you to look back and see where it went wrong. And if you're still confused, please make sure you check with me and I will be happy to sit down with you, or Zoom with you, or answer it in any way, shape, or form to make sure you're understanding this strategy. Let's go to number two, Nij. At the beginning of their three-day vacation, the Palmers traveled a total of 530 miles. On the third day, they drove 75 miles. On the second day, they drove 320 miles. How many miles did they drive the first day? Is your answer reasonable? Explain. So we know how much they drove, how much they drove on certain days, What's your answer? You may pause the video now. Welcome back. The answer, 135 miles. The, at the end, we were at 530. And then we subtracted the two days that we knew of, and that left the, day, the unknown being 135. Let's do a few more. Let's go to number three. You divide in a number by three, add six, and then subtract seven. The result is four. What is the number? Explain. So go ahead and pause the video. Welcome back. Let's see what you got here. You got a number 15. And it mentions here C student explanations. You might have explained it differently, but we know that working backwards, we had four. Then the opposite of subtracting seven is adding seven, so we're up to 11. Then we take away six, because that's the opposite or inverse of adding. So that brings us back down to five. And the inverse of division is multiplication, so five times three is 15. Two more problems for our practice today. Number four. Mr. Toshio lent out 11 rulers at the beginning of class, collected four rulers in the middle, and gave out seven at the end of class. He had 18 at the end of the day. How many rulers did he start with? What is the first step to solving this problem? Go ahead, pause the video. Welcome back. 32 was the very end. How many did he start with? He had 18 at the end of the day, then the seven, Plus the four going back away. And then 11 more. We're working backwards. And there's one more problem, because I think you've got this, and I want you to be really sure. The math club is selling gift wrap for a fundraiser. They sold all 45 rolls of solid wrapping paper at $4 each and rolls of patterned wrapping paper at $5 each. They made $265. How many rolls of patterned paper did they sell? Go ahead, pause the video and solve the problem. I'll see you on the other side. You may pause the video now. And welcome back. 17 rolls of flattened paper. But how did we figure that out? We knew that 45 times 4 
180. 265 by 180 is 85. 85 divided by 5 is 17. We have now reached the point where I'm ready for you to start on your homework. There are five problems on the back of 66. The front side of 65 will give you the reminder of the steps. Understand, plan, solve, and check. Make sure you're using all four of those steps as we go through this. There are five problems, I believe, today. And I look forward to either seeing the paper copy or in your Google Classroom. If you have any questions, please do email me at mirland at psychchipschool.net or see us during our live stream sessions or office hours. Hope you all have a minute of Gizhigad. Mama P.